Uh, first, I'd like to call a meeting to order. And the first thing we have on the agenda uh, are any additions or corrections to the agenda. I sent that out earlier. Does anybody have anything to add? Okay, sounds like we're good. And the agenda is fairly light today, so I do think we'll get out of here fairly early. I have a couple of people that need to leave early, so just keep that in mind. If we get off on any tangents, we may uh, table those. Uh, also, sent out the uh, last minutes, which Dennis did a fantastic job on those. Uh, and we'd like to go ahead and vote to approve the minutes from the last meeting. All in favor? Motion to approve. Second? Good. All right. So the minutes are approved. Okay. So, uh, Don, you're up next for okay, the recreation. A uh, couple of things. Uh, first is responsibility for kayak launches has been transferred from the recreation department to the lakes department. So, lakes is now responsible for all the kayak launches except the one at DeSoto that the DeSoto Marina uses uh, for the rental kayaks. Uh, the other what, thing. What does that mean, Don? We're responsible for that means that any of them any maintenance or construction of kayak launches is now the responsibility of lakes and who made that decision it's, it's really huh? i say who made that decision that was a decision made between the uh, me and stacy and okay. it's, it's 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 minimal i mean it's, it's I a know. little bit of groundwork and and some some banks and that's about it just made more fun. sense because uh, Lakes is responsible for all the boat uh, ramps. Uh, the other thing is the kids fishing der the annual kids fishing derby has officially been canceled. Uh, there was no way that we could come up with uh, a location that would meet all of Game and Fish's social distancing requirements. Uh, so we have uh, canceled it and hopefully can uh, have it again next year. Uh, the other thing, they're finalizing the budget, uh, capital plans uh, for recreation, that recommendations were completed yesterday. Um, some, I guess the important things uh, some of y'all might be interested in is the archery range was uh, made, made the final cut in the capital plan. Uh, and uh, the other thing of interest in the capital plan from lake standpoint, the uh, improvements to uh, and repairs to the uh, DeSoto Beach area uh, are in the capital plan with the proviso that uh, DeSoto drawdown occur. If the drawdown does not occur, if it's not part of the capital plan, if they choose to delay it, then uh, we won't do the DeSoto uh, Beach uh, improvements because it, it adds to the cost of those improvements to try to do them without the lake being drawn down. Because part of it, a big part of it is some uh, additional uh, um, steps and some things, uh, you know. Uh, Stuff like that down in the water, it, it's more expensive to do. And I guess that's the key thing. Was the Coronado Beach discussed? Coronado Beach is something that was discussed, yes. And uh, there are some expenses there, and uh, it was decided that's not something we could justify trying to do right now. Now the Cortez Beach, that was uh, not discussed either. <clears throat> the new location for the Cortez Beach. That's what I meant, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, we that was discussed, but was not included because uh, we didn't feel like you know we could justify doing it right away because the, the, it, it's obvious we're going to meet with some significant resistance from the neighborhood. And so, uh, I think that's something that requires a little more planning and can't rush out and do it, include it next year, if we didn't think. 
maybe uh, we're looking at that as a maybe a 2022 project rather than a 2021 project. All right. Any other questions for Don? Good deal. Thanks, Don. All right. So we'll move on to the uh, committee member comments. First up, uh, Mr. Garrison, Dick, anything to share? Uh, last month, I told you we were close to announcing a uh, new general manager, and of course, we uh, announced Charles King, and uh, we had a nice uh, kickoff for him here last Friday. Um, people drove through, and uh, the uh, staff was here, and some of the board members were here, and they put some of the dumber board members out in the rain guarding the <laughs> gate over uh, by the church, but that's okay, too. Is that, is that where you were? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, Charles is here. Uh, we're happy to have Charles. Uh, he's on board. Uh, we have a new uh, board member. I don't know whether you guys caught that. Uh, Joanne uh, Corey is our new board member. She goes by the name of Joni, not Joanne. And uh, we now have a full seven board members. Um, I'm sorry, what was her last name? Corey, C O R R Y. Uh, and uh, she'll, she's a good addition to the board, uh, we think. And uh, the, uh, the only other thing I have, and you have it on the agenda, is uh, you saw Ella made some changes or some recommendations, I guess, to, to your policies and your charter. And, uh, you know, they're here. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm a terrible parliamentarian, so you tell me what I need to do with these to take them back. I, we're having a discussion session this afternoon, and if you guys agree and everything's great, I'll give them to, or you can give them to Ella to put in the discussion session and with the discussion session this afternoon, then they go to the board meeting next uh, week. I think the, I think the deal with that was we, we had gone through and not redlined anything. We basically redone it all because it was so scattered and we just put it back together. And, and I think what Ella had is basically a redlined version of what we had come up with as a group. Well, I, I looked at it. I didn't know it was Ella, you all, yeah. who was, but it looked fine. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't have any uh, any big input into it. Just, yeah. just tell me what to do or, or tell Ella what to do. It okay. would be better. Okay. Did I ask, did, did I ask Charles to come back and talk about this? That uh, the board is looking at all of the committee charters. Did I understand that correctly? The board is looking at the language that the committee charters fall under. Uh, that language is sometimes unclear in terms of do I vote on this board? Should I vote on this board? Okay. Uh, should Brad vote on, uh, or I'm sorry, on this committee? Should I vote? Should Brad vote? Should it just be a committee vote? That kind of cleanup stuff. Because when, when you change a bylaw, it trickles down into the policies and so forth, and there's just some cleanup work there. Anything else, Dick? Oh, I'm good. Any other questions for Dick before we move on? So as far as the charter goes, I don't know that I've seen that Redland version. Has anybody else seen that? So is that something that I can, I can get it to you? I mean, Here, the here's two we, copies of Yeah, the, the only thing we changed on the charter was the term and the month, I think. Oh, that was, I mean, right. it, was, it was very, very minor. Here's what Ella said, and, and you can have my copy of and now does the board need to approve that? Is that right? Yeah, we, you bring it back to us and we say yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that would be the next step, I think, because the uh, old one is still out on the website. Yeah. Right. So is that something that we'll just send out to the committee and reply via email, or how do you want to do that? Let me get, I'll get it, um, I'll find it right now, I'll just email it to you, and you can 
look at it and get it back to me. Okay. So the work that we did, the charter that we submitted hasn't been commented on. Something else was commented on. Now we're going to have to go back and no, 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 no. realign our we, there. We, my understanding is we read we we redid the charter and uh, policy, right. and then we submitted it. But we submitted it a completed document with no red line, and then they wanted a red line version. Well, Ella took ours and the old and basically made a red line version out of the two, so that you ended back up with ours and there was a trail to follow to get there, and that's. That's that's my understanding of what it is. So just a red line of the changes, by correct. Right. Okay. It's just a so just a tracking of those changes. Should it just be a formality. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to make clear to me, the red line version, the red line areas are the areas where changes were made. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions about that? Or do, do we, is there any uh, phrase or language about the ramps in here? The boat brakes and the kayak launches? That's that's procedural. That's not okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well we'll move along then to uh, Brad, your part. Anything okay. you want to share? Um only thing that's written on the agenda is the herbicide treatment on Lake Maria. As you know, we've had issue on Maria for a few years. We treated it once already this year. It knocked it back tremendously. Um, we had pond weed and and um, um, Southern Naiad, and we had um, Cara, which is a, a macrophilic algae, and Nutella, another macrophilic algae. Well, it knocked that back to nothing. And we've had Nutella come on since then, so it, it knocked it down, it's coming back. Well, we've treated the first round of that. Um, we treated the south half of the lake last Tuesday. We're planning to treat the north half of the lake. Um, on Tuesday of next week, the manufacturer has a 14-day window or 14-day waiting period after a first application to do it again. So um, we treat one half of the lake um, out to about six feet of water, and then next week we'll treat the other half. Um, we are already in, in, in the process between the applications. We stocked um, some grass carp in the lake. Um, so we're already starting to see some of that algae dying and part of what happens when that algae dies is it breaks off from the bottom, floats to the surface, it's dead it, and it floats around with the wind so it's an inconvenience for shoreliners that live there but it's decomposing, it's dead, it's, it will be gone you know, in, in a few days. So um, seeing good response from that so as long as uh, we don't have any issues or the only thing is we if, if there's high wind we can't do the application because there's a there's a granular uh, chemical that we apply to and if you know if you've got high wind it blows powder everywhere and we just can't do it we're not going to do it in that wind we'll do it the next day or the next day or whenever so um, did get a report from um, Ray this morning that um, all, a lot of the lakes are below pool um, nothing alarming in any way but you know, we haven't had any significant amount of rain in some time, so they're a little bit low. Um, we do have really good clarity on, on the lakes, and, and one of Ray's notes is this it was Balboa is the clearest it's been in some time. Um, 12 foot secure eating on Balboa. So that, that's, that's pretty good. Um, we did have um, over four feet, on, it was four and a half feet on Isabella, too, which has been plagued with low water clarity. We were on Isabella yesterday and, and noted that it looked really clear for the lake. I mean, varies from one lake to the next, but Isabella looked really good. The um, reason we were on Lake Isabella yesterday is if you all have been on Lake Isabella, you know there's a an outflow structure that's out in the lake, um, separate from the spillway. I'm not sure why that was done, but it's the only lake in the village that's got one. Well, it had um, catwalk grading on the top of it, and that structure was failing in the middle. So you've got a six-foot square with two pieces of catwalk that's collapsing in the middle. Um, 
and it would collect all kinds of material and stuff and it wouldn't flow out and just that added weight. Well, we pulled that stuff off and um, had a, a six by six graded structure. It's, it, it's a whole different structure. Um, had built and we apply, we put that on yesterday. Um, so if, there'll be some, it, it's not like catwalk grading, so some of that small stuff that would have collected on that, like mulch and that stuff, will go through and go out. The big stuff that would cause issue will still stop. We can get that off and it's not going to collect on that like it would on the other. So, um, we're still doing the compliance surveys. Um, if you really want to feel bad, I'll tell you what we're seeing. Um, it's, it's pretty dismal. Um, well, visual compliance on the lakes. So we're at um, power boats. Let me open it up from a most recent. So far, we've had 417 power boats on the lake. On the lakes, we've done all the lakes except Balboa and Segovia. Segovia is going to have next to nothing on yet. Um, but we've had 417 power boats and 753 non-power boats. And this does not include boats that are an extended distance away from the shoreline or up under people's decks and those kind of things. We see those and we note those, but we don't count them because they're not required to have details on them. Um, but of those 417 power boats, 160 of those we could not see decals on. Um, if you're looking at, at $75 a piece at $12,000 on that that we're lacking. Um, we've seen 753 non-power boats and it's a lot more difficult for us to 100% verify that kayaks don't have decals on them, so this number could be skewed drastically. But um, 753 power non-power boats on the lakes, 473 we could not verify had decals. 7,800 bucks, so you're looking at twenty thousand dollars of lost revenue if they all don't have decals on them. But like I said, they you know if they're on the shoreline and they're turned the wrong way, the decal could be on it. We can't see it can't verify that. So, um, like I say, we still like um, Lake Balboa um, and, and Segovia. Segovia, it takes longer to get out there and put the boat in than it is to do the survey out there. Um, but we'll, we'll do that after we get done. But we still like Lake Balboa. And, and the reason we do this is by policy, it, you know, boats that are on the water along the shore, <coughs> suspended above the water, require to have decal on. So, um, it's just been, uh, it's been about, it's been about normal is what we've seen, you know, most of the time around all the lakes. That's about what we see, 50% compliance, and that's pretty close to where we are right now. Overall, um, the compliance department will follow up, um, and they are <coughs> turning in. Obviously, so many people don't have decals. We turn that stuff in, and, and they follow up. They check in our purchasing program, and, and if people have decals, they most of the time will give them a phone call, or if they've got an email, they might try to shoot them an email and say, "Hey." Just wanted to verify that this is on your, you know, we see you bought it, but we didn't see it on the boat. Um, I mean, I talked to an owner yesterday that had the decal on his pontoon boat, had two kayaks. He said, what are you guys doing? I said, well, we're making sure everybody's got their decals. He said, he said well, I've got my decals on my boat. I said, well, I can see it on that one, but I can't see it on the other two. He said, well, it's in the house. <laughs> I just hadn't put it on yet. So, where do the dollar figures on these, these two? Um, it's twelve thousand dollars on the on the power boat and um, seventy eight hundred on the power. Yeah, seventy eight hundred. So, what do you, what's been your experience? 
experience on the compliance end of it, how, do, how does that usually work? There, so you got 50% that you don't see out of that 50%. How many really didn't have a decal about? They, it's going to be pretty low, the folks that actually haven't bought decals. Um, but there are some people that say they're not going to buy decals, and they roll over into a fining process. And after so many days, it's $150 fine, and then after so many days after that, it's $25 a day. So um, I'm not exactly certain what those are. That's that's kind of Charlie's specialty, but um, I do know that they're working with and they're trying to make sure that everybody gets them like they're supposed to. Hey, Brett, <clears throat> is uh, Charlie thinking about any policy changes on this since this is a broken record every year? I don't know as of right now. Um, when we get this completed, I'd like to sit down and, and say, hey, you know, what are, we, what are we looking at to make changes in this? Because we need to we need to do something. So these people that say they're not going to buy stickers, that they give any kind of reason or excuse or the the one that I've the one that I've seen was um, just doesn't think we're doing anything with the lake, so he's not going to buy stickers. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you get the survey finished, I'm going to sit down with Charlie because I, I still think it'll be a, a graduated. You know, if you buy the sticker in January when you're supposed to assist, if you don't, it goes up 10% a month or whatever. There's got to be some kind of penalty to it. I, I, I mean, it, it's to me, it's one of those where you, you've got a you've got a window at the beginning of the year, and I, and I know that some people, if we did the survey in March, there are a lot of people that don't have their boats in the water because they take them out for storage for the winter time, and they haven't put them back in yet. So you really need to wait till just before Labor Day or Memorial Day to really do them. That's when you know the little lakes really start getting busy. Um, but there's a there's a lot of boats on the lakes right now. So yeah, completely agree. We need to. Uh, I think we need to, I don't know how, but I think we need to adjust our process. Are you still looking at the, the $10 a day fishing charge that's, I mean, the boat launch charge? Yep. That, that seems awful low to me. Well, it, we can talk about that. I mean, everywhere else around here is, is, 10, is $5, so we're double, like any of the core ramps are $5. Um, I, I mean, I don't know of another one that's a day rate that's any higher than that anywhere. I, no, I don't know. It's $5. It, it's it's the West Rock Landing here. It's fine. Both there. It's like a core lake. No, it's not a core lake. Right. I guess the only real difference, though, are those waters are pretty much public waters. Yeah. yeah. And you can access it. We're not public waters as far yeah, as. We're comparing apples well, to oranges. Yeah. If you made it uh, high enough, you might run some people off. And if the people would, people that want to pay it want to pay it, then fine. So, you know, I've just heard complaints about too many outside people mm -hmm. here. Well, they, you know, if you charge 25 or 50 bucks or whatever, you know, just kind of keep going up to you see the other numbers going up, going down. I think there's more of a concern here about more people fishing on these lakes in here that have like a watch or something like that. Right now. What's the latest on the collection of this ramp? Right? That's what I was just looking up. We're at $8,850 collected at the boat ramps this year. Our total for 2019 was $6,965. Much improved. Much well, improved. This our, is a our compliance, our compliance at the boat ramps has drastically improved. Um, I have in the last two weeks written two violations, and I went for months without writing one. Um, but our, both of them at Coronado, oddly enough, uh, just a few days apart. Um, but both of those people, one of, they were both property owners that hadn't paid at the boat ramp. And um, this last week, you know, we, we write a violation on it. It's like a, it looks like a ticket, honestly. It's a big piece of cardstock. Um, and both of those put money in the box. One of them, for, he lives right around the street from the boat ramp, but he came back later that week and put money in the box. And then the other one, I guess they put money in the box before they left. So they both paid before they left. So. You raise the price of compliance, the other side of that may be that the compliance goes down. Yeah. 
you know, people just won't pay when it gets yeah. to a certain amount. And and to catch them is tough because yeah. if you report them and, and they'll be gone by the time the police they aren't gonna stick around to watch the guy come in. Yeah. Agree with that. We 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 do have I mean it's it's you know, you're probably tired when you hear me say this. It's so much it's so much it's gotten so much better this year than it ever was before. Um, because it, it was pretty lacking before, but you know, we're we're making steps in the right direction for certain and, and I mean there's always room for improvement, there's always other things we can do. Um, so we're kind of making some plans for some other things I think we'll talk about here in a little bit and um, uh, yeah, we'll talk about down here in, in new proposals, but um, yeah, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction with that for sure. So, it just, uh, and, and I kind of, I'm with Tom on that, if we, if we be, I think if we increase our price too much more than we're, compliance is going to go down. I guess if yeah. somebody's not going to pay, they're not going to pay whether it's $10 or $100. Yeah. I'll pay $10 if I'm not going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then I mean, if we go up a whole lot more on our uh, on our uh, dollar amount at the at the ramp, then <coughs> then um, you know, is is it? I guess I'll think back to the, like the last time I bought a, a an annual pass at Core, it was thirty three dollars, and that tells you how long it's been since I bought one. Um, but it was three dollars at the core ramps, and it was thirty-three dollars for annual. And I bought an annual, so it was—I don't know what it is now. But um, you know, if you go to something like that and you use their ratio, you're talking about a lot of money for an annual pass. I don't know. Just something about for that on that side too. Can I suggest we uh, put this on our list for the work next work meeting? Maybe we could talk about it more. Yeah. If you want to capture that, Dennis, for the, for the work meeting, maybe a topic for the work meeting. Yeah. Okay. What else, Brad? Uh, the soda dredging. We uh, um, met with kind of an introductory with um, a gentleman from the um, Finance Commission the other day. Um, he said, as of right now, to just plan like we were going to dredge Lake DeSoto. So that's what we're, that's what we're planning for. Um, we got a lot of planning to do, but that's what we're that's what we're working for. So we're gonna we're gonna plan for that. Uh, if something changes, you know, I'll be sure and let you know. Um, I got an email yesterday, I believe. Um, I said I need to have my budget ready by yesterday, pretty much. <laughs> so. Um, you have an <laughs> estimate for the cost of. Dredging. We've yep. we've got it in the budget for two hundred sixty-five thousand. I think. I'm pretty sure that's what what's in there. I don't, without being on the lake and going through and looking at everything, I don't know if that's sufficient. Um, I think that probably will handle what's in the lake. I don't know if that will handle what's west of Kalella and everything in the lake. Going to do an eight foot drawdown on this other? That's the plan. With an eight foot drawdown, can't most of the dredging be done? Uh, Access is the big issue. We can do a lot. We can do, um, and, and I, you're probably tired of hearing this too, but our planning is so much different than it was when we did this lake the last time. I kind of came in about this time. Um, actually, yesterday was six years since I've been here. So I came in about this time in 2014 when they were already planned and already had budgeted and all already everything and this is that's what we did. Um, but we'll be checking codes and access and all that and I'm sure we'll do more mechanically than we ever have on that lake. Um, but access is going to be limiting and, and you know the more we can do mechanically the better off we'll be at least as far as how much it costs because we can do it cheaper that way. And um, but there'll still be places that we have to do hydraulic that we can't get to. You haven't done any soundings yet? No. Not yet. 
With eight foot drawdown, are you going to be able to dredge most of the pond back there to golf course? No. Use? No. You can dredge, when we had it down the last time, you can dredge just about to the birdhouse if the birdhouse is still there behind the green. When you come around the side of the green, there was a birdhouse on the right mm -hmm. side. And that's about as far out as you can go. Because once you get there, the bottom falls off. Um, our, I do remember the bulldozer standing like this, coming back out from when it, they almost fell off in it. But um, it's you can't do all of it. So a lot of that will have to be done hydraulically. And that may be one of those where we decide we're going to take four foot off the top or three foot off the top. We're not going to get it all, but we can work on trying to get more of it the next time. I don't know. We'll just have to see how much it's there. That's all I got right now. Okay. Just one quick question. I know we didn't have it on the agenda. Any major things with the fishing channels? I mean, as far as are we having a lot of people sign up for it? I saw in the paper where there's been one fish caught. There's been there there have been two fish caught, one by an individual that hadn't. Hadn't signed, hadn't signed up for it. They have since signed up for it, but they <laughs> haven't been lucky enough to catch another fish. But uh, we've had one fish caught on Lake Cortez. Mr. Staten caught it. Um, and we've had um, about $1,100 worth of entries. I don't remember exactly. There's about 70 or so property owners that have signed up for it. There are several families, and then there are like five or six non property owners that are. That are sponsored, sure. sponsored guests. How much did it cost to put the fish in? Not a thing. For tags and all that? About 300 bucks for the tags. That's for the gun and the tags and everything. It's about $300. Okay, when are you going to start giving a chance as to where the fish are? <laughs> well, I, I told you how many fish were in each lake. Yeah. There's a big <laughs> That narrows it down. So, uh, you didn't say what kind they are. Though. Yeah, we, I, I'm talking GPS ones. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> I think this is probably a pretty fair assumption, but um, the majority of the fish are largemouth bass. Just when you're shocking fish in the summer in the village, you're just predominantly going to get bass. They're not all bass. There are some really, really big bluegill with tags in them. There are some really nice catfish with tags in them. Um, we did not get a crappie, so there's not a crappie. Um, we didn't expect to, but we didn't get a walleye in Cortez, so there's not a walleye with a tag in it. Um, but we do have some catfish. We've got catfish, largemouth bass, spotted bass, red ear. There's, uh, there's, we got one red ear and it has a tag in it. Um, there's some bluegills, and there, oddly enough, there's a green sunfish that's got a tag in it too. I mean, if, if a lure gets near it, it should bite it. That's their, we're, we're trying to help people catch fish. Um, anyway. We do have a uh, bass tag from about 11 and a half to 12 inches up to just shy of five pounds. And there's a catfish that's a little way just shy of 10 pounds that's got a tag in it. It moved around on the yard already done. From, from what the... From I think I even, I caught a, a six pound catfish on Coronado the other day. It didn't have tag in it. <laughs> and I caught we, it right off the bank. I mean, I threw a, a jig up there and boom, you grabbed it. We had a... a from, and when I talked to Mr. Satin after he caught his fish, from where he kind of described where he caught the fish was about half a mile from where we turned it loose. So GPS. Help you. That's just because help. we turned them loose there doesn't mean they're still there. <laughs> so, but that's a good starting point. Well, maybe we'll start releasing that data before too long. I doubt it. Okay. At least, at least one spot, maybe. Any other questions for Brad before we move on? Okay, as far as chairman remarks go, uh, I think I've put everything in the agenda that I wanted to really talk about, so I'll save my comments for later. So, uh, committee member comments, if you guys have anything to say about your lakes, inspections, anything else going on, maybe we'll just go around the room real quick. Rob, you want to start? I have nothing. Okay. Um, Nothing new on Sophia. Okay. We were just trying to help Dennis out. Very very we did start, so we did when we put carp in Maria, we did put some carp in Sophia because we have had issue with that the last mm -hmm. several years. We had this year we treated the first time. As far as I know, it has not returned on Sophia. Um, so we're we're and, and 
here's the thing, we did the same application at the same rate from Maria to Sophia. Um, the only the only thing that I can tell is different is is on Maria it was a little bit more advanced than it was on Sophia. It was like in its growth stage we hit it a little bit earlier on Sophia. So uh, that's something that we'll be looking at, especially for next year to where they're rising in is to be ready to treat it sooner. It was so much better this year than last year's treatment on Sophia. Yeah. It really worked well. Okay. Uh, the only thing I'll mention, I did go out to Lake uh, Coronado last week, and the parking lot is much, much improved. So, so thanks to Brad for addressing that issue. We had the big mud hole out there on the parking lot, and that's all been graded and yeah, traveled. So, yeah, and that was one about a month ago. Would be, yeah, I think they did that the day yeah, after I the I think meeting. I sent the picture to you all. Right. I was yeah. out there that day. The only thing nicer would be paving, and that's coming down the road. So yeah. anyway, thanks for getting that taken care of. So. Cliff? Nothing. Okay. Dennis? What does our next formal lake report actually do? Uh, I had it on my calendar, or I, it just as a reminder for me, that we wanted to maybe get them done in August, so maybe we can talk about it at our next meeting. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Maybe doing a kind of a complete inspection sometime this month? Maybe be prepared for it for September? Uh, okay. Mm, maybe. I'm not. If you can. Diane? There's a, <clears throat> Vince and I were walking the other morning, and there's that one couple where she water skis every morning, and they were awfully close to the tip of Vivi Lane, with, and they were definitely not 100 foot offshore. So, um, just want you to be aware of that, and then I'm not sure what we would we would necessarily do about it, but it is that same couple that what she water skis every morning. On Balboa? This uh no, it's 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 Coronado. 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 Oh, Coronado. I know where the is it the blue boat? Hmm? Mike Williams. I don't know. Is the blue boat with a black motor? Maybe. I, I, I will you know, Mike. I'll let you know. I'm pretty sure she called it. Pictures and video. No, I'm not coming up. Thank you. Me. Okay, <laughs> that was part of my question. Yeah, pictures and video, that would okay. help a lot. So. Okay. Thank you. That's it. That, that was on Coronado. That was on Coronado. She's there every morning. Yeah. yeah. They, they ski in a wetsuit. Yeah. When we had Coronado down, they were water skiing. Well, there's a there's a couple that, that skis on Balboa yeah. year round. Yeah. And I will say, I really like the boat they use. I think they've got a Mastercraft or something because I was out there fishing one day and they were just going back and forth on that end of the lake down toward the, the dam. And uh, surprisingly, that boat doesn't throw a huge weight. It's minimal. It just they zoom to one end and they'll turn around and zoom back, and it's just you know not bad. It's a small boat made for no weight. Yeah. Yep. One right. of them will ski for a while, and then they'll straight to the side. The other one will ski for a while, and then they'll they do it a couple of times, and then they go home. Yeah. So if I ever made him, I'm going to congratulate them because <laughs> they they do a good job. Don, you have anything else to add? I know you don't have any life responsibility or anything. No, I didn't talk about it, but we're working on fees for next year. And uh, hopefully we'll wind that up next week. That's been a tremendous ordeal with the, the COVID deal, what to, what to do about the fees for the various amenities and recreation. Um, and we've been struggling with that one and looking for new ways to package things maybe or whatever. Uh, trying to increase revenue, which is also hard to do uh, in the situation we're in, because you know our expectation is like Woodlands. We're not we're not sure you're going to be able to do anything over there until maybe September. And uh, so I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, issues there. Right. Okay. All right, so kind of getting on to some new business. Uh, maybe should have done this earlier, but uh, welcome to the committee, Diane. Uh, I know this is, you've been on the committee for a couple of months now, right? But I think this may be the first live meeting you've it attended. Is. So it is. Yep. Uh, we had you on as a, a CMP representative before, so right. thanks for joining the committee. I think that'll be great. Uh, 
As far as uh, documentation update, I thought I would just throw this on the agenda because it's kind of been resolved, but uh, there's a, a few little tweaks. The, the charter was approved last month, and now we need to do a review on the red line, just the changes. That sounds like that's going to be and a pretty it, simple it, thing to do. Yeah, I, I mean, it really is just a... So the charter was approved by the board, or are you talking about approved by this it's committee? Re, it's been approved, approved by, by this committee. committee. Last month we approved it, and... Uh, now it's come back to us as a red line document. I think that we need to take another look at. It. Okay. And is that something we can just reply back to you? Yeah, and I, I really, I really think it's more of a formality. Formality. Yeah. yeah. So if everybody can take a look at that red line version, uh, just make sure you don't have any questions or issues with that. We can reply back to Brad with our approval. And since we've already approved it once, that should be sufficient. Yeah. Right. Brad, you look at what Ella did. Yes. So Ella did the red light? Yes. Okay. Secondly, on the lakes policy, that was also approved last month. So I just, uh, you know, it'll come off the agenda for our next meeting, but I just wanted to throw that out there that we did approve that. On the lakes rules and regulations, uh, there, we did approve that also last month, but there are some proposed changes that uh, Brad sent out, and I sent it out on the email with the agenda, and, the, uh, and it's just a, a couple of pretty minor changes. You want to talk about that, Brad? Uh, I'm sidetracked, so say again. Okay. Should... On the rules and regs, oh, yes. you had a, a slight change to yes. that. Yes. Um, one thing I noted in the rules and regs when, we were when I was going over that, um, Years, in years past, the rules and regs said for um, requirement of a decal was on the water, suspended above the water, or along the shoreline. Well, somewhere in translation, the along the shoreline has been removed. And what we passed, I don't know how I missed this, but what we passed last month was on the water or suspended above the water. So everybody's kayaks that they store along the seawall by what we passed, and I missed it. No, no permit. Yeah. I mean, um, I met with what, what I'd originally sent to to, uh, to Jerry and, and to Alan, I believe, was um, to revise that to 50 feet. Anything within 50 feet of the shoreline. That seems reasonable to me. I met with Charlie yesterday, um, and he said all of their other documentations for this sort of thing are 20 feet. So to make it consistent from one document to the next, he suggested we do 20 feet. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Uh, 50 feet may be a stretch for some people because they're, they could be storing, their houses are close enough, they'd be storing them under the back deck and they're within 50 feet of the, of the shoreline. Yeah, I'm within 25 feet, so I could easily get away with it if you had it 50 feet. So yeah. 20 feet is really good. So that, that was the, that's, that's really all I've got, is just adding that in because we, really should have it, I believe. So, I mean, it, there are a lot of them that once, it, once it, you know, there, there are ways people will loophole around it, but we'll do what we can. So. Motion to approve as proposed with the 20-foot change versus 50. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Sounds like that's passed. So who was the actual keeper of this document? Wasn't that Alan? Uh, yes, Alan actually well, put that to care of the charter. I think Alan, this was Alan's option. Right. Yeah, I think Alan did a revision on that. I will go in and basically what was sent out to you all, I'll go in and take 50 feet out, put 20 feet in. Um, if you're all good with that, that's already online. That document's already on the member information. So if y'all are all good with that, when I get that small change made, I'll just pass that along to Stephanie and it'll the updated version will be back online. Is that good with you all? Yes. Okay. Uh, that was it for the documentation update. Uh, on new proposals uh, from our last meeting, we did have a conversation around the short-term rental property revenue proposal. Uh, didn't really get any traction on our last meeting. Uh, and we talked about whether it still needed to be under review, potentially a subcommittee for that. 
uh, what what are your thoughts there? Does that really have any merit that we want to address? Because if, if you guys remember, this had to do with property owners of rental units being able to buy maybe an annual permit that they could then pass along to their renters that would give them access to the lakes. And of course that idea was probably created prior to our more recent compliance efforts and more improved uh, collection at the boat ramps. So I think as a group we didn't really feel like it had that much merit. Uh, so I guess the question is, do we want to leave this on the table, or do we think that our boat ramp process is working enough, or do we want to push it back to the, uh, I think that came from a previous committee. Previous administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that anything we want to pursue? Yeah, Person, my, my thing is that we table until it becomes more dire. That's that's kind of my thoughts. I don't know that there's a whole lot of uh, upside to it since we've got better compliance. But uh, well, I can say, you know, I was involved when they with the original uh, proposal, and things have changed. Uh, for one thing. Uh, back back then, almost all the rentals were done by uh, real estate offices around here. I mean, a great portion of them were. And so it would have been easier to manage this. Now so many of them are part of the Airbnb program, and things get a lot more complicated in that, that process. There's a substantial number of those rentals are Airbnb now instead of, you know, the real estate company. Yeah, yeah, good point. Plus, we talked about how that program could even be administered and how the POA might have to take on a lot of responsibility to keep track of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like, unless anybody has any other comments, that we're just going to table that for the time being. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, I, I think we've got some exciting news that I wanted to share next. Around we kicked around the Lake Marshall's proposal. Uh, so Brad and I had an opportunity to, to meet with Charlie Brown with compliance uh, and talk about the idea. And I was all set to really sell that plan, volunteer based, and all this kind of stuff about how we can do Lake Marshall's. Well. Uh, Charlie had actually done quite a bit of research himself, and I guess it's okay for us to share this, right? Uh, so he found out that uh, Bella Vista has a program uh, up there, and I don't have extra copies of this, but I'll kind of show you. But it's on Lake Rangers, and they actually have paid staff. I don't know if they're considered compliance up there or what, what department they fall under. But they actually have paid staff at Bella Vista to do what they call Lake Rangers. And so he did share with, uh, with Brad and me their standard operating procedures that they use for this. So if anybody would like to just look at it, I'll be happy to, to share this with you. But I uh, had some really, really good ideas in there. I think one example that he uh, kind of talked about was in the past, if they had a non-approved visitor or somebody in Bella Vista that they found fishing, say, along the shoreline, and somebody stopped them and kind of checked their credentials or whatever, uh, they would just say, well, you know, you can't just fish here, you've got to buy a day-use pass or something like that, and they would sell them a day-use pass on the spot. Well, now, as part of their new operating procedures, if they find somebody that's out of compliance, they are asked to leave immediately. They don't even give them an opportunity to purchase a day use pass. So they're, they're treating it pretty seriously as far as managing their uh, lakes and their access to their lakes and things like that. So again, the, the idea here is that, uh, you know, Charlie has kind of a vision, I think, for compliance and creating more of a security department uh, that would not only cover things like this, but uh, they're already making a lot of progress with the gates because I, I know that's been a huge issue for property owners for a long time. They're already doing a, a really great job around the boat ramps 
and the beach, you know, compliance is out there uh, just about every time I'm down there and, and I see them out there. So I think his vision is to kind of expand that department to cover things like trails and lakes and, you know, beaches and boat ramps and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, because some of the, uh, the concerns that I had with the volunteer base was, you know, what, is there any liability for anybody if we were to do that? And then how do we get volunteers to use their own equipment? And how are we going to provide incentives for them to spend their time and their equipment and gas and everything out on the lakes? And this really resolves that if, if we can uh, get something like that going. So bottom line, Charlie asked uh, if we would discuss it at our committee, and if we think that's a good idea that we forward our recommendation to the board that we would like to support this effort to create a lake ranger, lake marshal compliance uh, no lose, right? security force. Yeah. The, now, one, one other kind of interesting thing that I mentioned is, you know, what about safety and liability for the paid staff out there? You know, you put one person in a boat and send them out on the lake, is that safe or could there be some issues there? And we even talked about the idea of maybe allowing volunteers to ride along with a lake ranger, you know, so they don't have to have two paid staff out in the boat. Maybe there would be some uh, shoreliners or other property members that would like to help out in that regard. They're not using their boat and equipment. They're not using their gas. Uh, they're just out there kind of as a safety precaution right along with a, a paid staff member. So that, that's something that we could consider as well. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, there were 54 volunteers on, on next door yesterday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, and on we need that, to do something. And on that, you have to put your name on there. Yes. So you can send them a letter and say, hey, thank you for volunteering. Now, there, you know, there are some things that they'll have to address, things like equipment. I think there's probably a boat or two owned by the POA currently, but, you know, they, they might need additional equipment. They might need additional storage space for the boats possibly on the lake, say Balboa, for example, it would be great if they had a dedicated boat slip that they could keep a boat on the water all the time. Uh, some of the smaller lakes might require a boat and be towed from one lake to another. I'm sure, I'm sure initially there's, they're probably going to end up with a boat that they trailer from one lake to the next. That's, that's, a, boat. Yeah. that's, a, boat, isn't it? that's a police boat, yeah. Oh, it won't be the same boat? Probably, well, maybe. So, Brad, was there any anything else that kind of stood out to you at our meeting with Charlie that I think that's it. mention it? I think that's it. What are we going to do? Anything? Uh, well, again, <laughs> unless you guys want to study this a little bit more, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah. It would be a paid staff. Uh, part of the compliance department that would, and it wouldn't necessarily be a full-time lake ranger. It could right. be somebody who does ramps and beaches, they get out on the lake, they maybe do trails, they do other compliance activities, so it could be uh, a multi-purpose type position, and some, some of it could be full-time, some of it could be part-time. It's obviously going to be seasonal. Yeah. There were their lakes. Yeah, their main focus seasonally would be lakes as it was required seasonally. But I mean, obviously, lakes are not utilized by that many people year round. So in those slower times, they would assist with other things. Or if something happened one day a week where they needed to go help with something else, then then they could do that. But that would be kind of their main focus. Their main directive would be compliance on the lakes. But they would be available to help with other things. If need. So I guess for our committee, is that enough information for us to vote maybe on supporting this initiative, or do you need more information? Motion to endorse. We can, we can get Charlie all the support we can get. Okay, so I've heard a, heard a motion to endorse. Let's go ahead and vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, well it sounds like the the Lakes Committee has uh, voted to support this uh, compliance initiative.
So, Dick, what do you need from the Lex Committee for us to send that to the board? Uh, send something to Ella to put on the workstation this afternoon, if you could. If you could do that this morning. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll, we'll draft up an email or something, Brad, and I'll help you with that or whatever we need to do. Uh, and just, you know, endorse our support for that. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was not expecting that when we met with Charlie. I thought I was getting myself in a in a jam with a, running that volunteer committee. <laughs> were, were there any numbers put with it? As no. far no, not that we discussed in our meeting. No, no he, he didn't he didn't give us any numbers as far as Because you know when you talk about a boat and a trailer and moving it around and storing it and, and maintaining it and so forth, insuring it. Right. right. You know, it, it goes from a, a ten thousand dollar project to a thirty thousand, fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Uh, you know, Charlie did mention as far as maybe the number of people they had working on it. I think he mentioned they had one full time, and pretty much everybody else was part time, or they were all part time. Thinking yeah, about Bella Vista. Yeah. yeah, Bella Vista. They were thinking they're all part time. I all, think all part they had one that they wanted to go full time right. and wasn't going to do it. Right. So they had all part time was was what they had. Right. Right then. Um, we do have a we do have a small boat, a little John boat that kind of would be the first round with this is kind of what we've offered that we don't use often in the Lakes Department. Um, it was actually the one that was for rent at the, at Waypoint for some time or DeSoto Marina for some time. Uh, we got it back this year and. and uh, that would be the, the initial boat. So we have a boat for them to start. It's probably not the boat that they want to end up in, but when they had big events over the 4th of July or something like that, and they were going to be on the bigger lakes through the holiday with a little bit more boat traffic, then for that they could borrow you know, our work boat for that. Or, I mean, because the police department are going to be in their boat on those big weekends. So um, we, could, we could work through, you know, for the first little bit till they kind of got their footing on and, and support them that way at least interdepartmentally. Yeah. So. And if anybody would like to donate the boat, I'm sure they would, I'm sure they would entertain that idea. You know, there's a zillion boats on our lakes out here that never get used. Or, or a volunteer lake sider or anglers club person that says, I'll take the guy out and whoever the employee. And then that kind of goes back to the volunteer system, yeah. with the volunteer being their boat. Um, so I don't know about that, but um, I know that that chief wrote a, wrote a proposal and the game of fish gave them that boat. Right. Yeah, there could be could be grant money, available. but because that's law enforcement, maybe it's a little bit different. But I mean, there there might be money available like that. I think on the, the smaller lakes, like uh, Granada, the smaller lakes, I think the shoreline is good. Uh, we've got a pretty active shoreline group, and I think I think we can look to the residents of the lakes to to monitor that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really do. I don't. I get very few complaints about boats moving too fast, or I, I don't. I, mean, I don't know that I've ever gotten one from Granada or Venice. Never, never seen one on Sofia. Yeah. I, mean, I, I have. Bill has told me about boats on Sofia moving really? too fast, but yeah. But it's 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 rare. It's rare. Um, but yeah, it, most of the time it's it's. We got a few from DeSoto this year. I don't know that I've got one from Cortez this year. Um, a few on Coronado, but most of them are on Balboa. Most, I mean, the overwhelming majority on Balboa. Uh, yeah, one other comment just came to mind on that. Uh, one reason I think Charlie was more in favor of having a paid staff was it's, it would be great if we had observers out there to monitor or whatever as volunteers, but there's no enforcement. Uh, so he, he said enforcement was a big part of what he was thinking because if they did find something happening that shouldn't be happening, a staff compliance person could actually write a citation where volunteers really couldn't do that. So that was another big concern. So, all right, any other questions about that? We've already kind of voted to, to endorse that. Uh, something recently came up. Uh, might have seen this on next door or something, but I know Brad has got some information submitted to him about uh, either shoreliners or property owners around the lakes maybe trapping animals 
nuisance animals, chipmunks, squirrels, whatever, uh, and maybe dispatching them in the lakes. Not just throwing them in the lakes, but maybe drowning them. Drowning, drowning them in the lakes and then disposing of the, the vermin, if, if you want to call them that. So uh, that kind of came up as whether that's a topic that should fall under the Lakes Committee, anything we want to get involved in, or what? any right. other thoughts there, Brad? Um, the, the reports that I've seen, and I've, I've heard a few, are people are catching animals in live traps, and they're nuisance animals that are causing issues for them. They're either squirrels or raccoons or chipmunks or those kind of things. I don't know any of the specifics on those, but um, I do know that those three species have been listed in conversations that I've had, and, and they're catching them in live traps, and they're putting the live traps in the lake. Now, I, I don't, as far as where the animal goes after it has been dispatched, I don't, I don't think they're putting them in the lake. Um, I but, think there would be evidence of floating. There, there should be. <laughs> there should be. Um, but as far as that, there's nothing like we've been back and forth with game and fish and. and there are, there are different methods of trapping animals, like like a very popular trapping method for beavers is a is a a drown trap. An animal will get in the trap on shore or along the edge of the shore, and it is weighted with an anchor of some kind that drags the animal or holds the animal submerged for an extended period. Um, so it's I mean it's something that's been utilized in that manner for a long time. And, uh, I don't know. It's kind of a it's a slippery slope, is it? So, were were there any other regulations that you found in your conversations with Damon Fish about that being illegal to kill those animals, or mm -hmm. not really? I've not I've not seen any. I I see. I get I've gotten conflicting arguments from Damon Fish. Someone says that it's not, and others say that it is. So it's it's I haven't gotten a, a straight answer consistently. Well, surprisingly, and, and I've often heard this myself, I assume it's true, that it's illegal to kill a snake in the state of Arkansas. And a lot of people don't like snakes, but supposedly it's illegal to kill a snake, any kind of snake. It, it has to be an the immediate state. threat to your well-being. Right, right. Yeah. So I don't know how much that applies to other critters. or. Uh, I, I will say, oddly enough, I, I've seen very, very few water moccasins in the village. And I tell people this all the time. I did see, we did see one yesterday. Oddly enough, like on the vacant lot just to the north from Don's from Don's house. Um, yeah, I know. I've seen him around. He was he's, up on my, my he's about that long. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I almost stuck up one in, uh, just off the seawall on my property. Yeah. But that was before it was developed. Yeah. I was just walking and checking coiled up yeah. almost every time. So. <laughs> Most of the snakes we see in the village are water snakes. Ninety-nine percent of the time, they're just a banded water snake of some kind. Right. But, uh, you know, just one idea, perhaps if we put something out in the uh, Village Digest about the lakes, just to advise property owners that that's not a good idea. We don't want to be... Do we want to do that, though? It's not illegal. Well, you know, it's kind of like there's a lot of stuff that's not illegal in the village, but we still don't necessarily want it policy-wise, right? So, I mean, people in their kids and grandkids and water ski there's a lot of people in the, in the lakes right and I don't necessarily know that uh, drowning animals in the water and then having water activities is necessarily a good thing uh, one of the one of the arguments that we run into is, is if you trapped an animal in a trap what do you do with it after you've trapped it well an issue one of the things I mean you can't dispatch it with a firearm because you can't discharge one in the village um, another is, is you have to move it, relocate it, or are you relocating your issue to your neighbor across the way? Um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of, I, I see, I see both sides of this. So, um, I really don't know. Well, you don't necessarily have to submerge a cage in the lake. There's other, other ways to do that if it's not illegal and that's what you want to do, right? Just. Well, it's it's thoughts. It's a, it's a it's a sensitive topic to people that are watching it happen. Regardless, I push this off on common property and wildlife. That's a good. <laughs> <point>. <laughs>
<laughs> divorce of experience. <laughs> It's been on next door, but it's I, been I, on next door. yeah, it's been on next door quite a bit. Yeah, I think um, I think people have observed their neighbors, you know, doing that and complained about it. At least on next door. Yeah. Same people that complain about deer being shot. Right. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, but could be. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll get with uh, common property manager about that. See what his opinion is. Um, well, I mean, they deal with some of the things on snakes and other wildlife. It seems like this ought to come and they deal, to them. Yeah, they deal with game and fish pretty directly with the fit with the the deer hunt and yeah, all that stuff all too. That. So they would have a good contact on that. I think who's, that's who, a good idea. who's handling the addling of the goose eggs? That is under common property. Ultimately, we do a lot of it on the lakes as far as the islands and those kind of things. But the reporting and all that stuff goes back through common property. Forestry, forestry, some yes. property forestry manager, which does the deer hunt and all that stuff. Okay, so it sounds like our decision is to uh, escalate that to common property and wildlife. I will. Uh, I'll do that. Okay. All right. Before we move on to club reports, any other proposals or new business around that that anybody's thought of? I've got a question that my memory job. We've got some friends that live all the way to the west end of the lake, right off Calvo. Those uh, townhouses down there. <clears throat> and they're having pretty consistent problems with uh, violation of the no wake area. And I think the no wake buoys are probably a mile. They're half a mile. Yeah, yeah they're half a mile. Would it area. be feasible? There are only two of them. Be feasible to put another no wake buoy in yeah. the middle because we were over there really, and they mentioned it. So we drove over there, over there in the boat the other day and they're pretty far apart. If they're far apart, they've been moved. Really? Yeah, because they were evenly. I, I, I put them out the last time they were there. They were pretty evenly spaced from this one to the middle, from that one to the shore. There were side. three, right? Well, somebody was moving them. And I do know that uh, the last time that the Anglers Club met, we typically we don't do any tournaments or activities in July and August anyway, so we had kind of put everything off at least until September. And I'm sure that's what we'll be discussing next week is if we're going to try to do anything beginning in September, but with the recent COVID news and cases and that sort of thing, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't cancel the rest of the year, but uh, we'll see. Anything else, Don? No, that's all. Okay. Uh, nobody here from Baycasters that I know of. About uh, Bowie Yacht Club. Nothing's going on, Jeff. Jeff and Stacy have been dealing with some uh, family medical issues, and so we had kind of had email meetings, and we've just kind of tabled everything until further notice. Okay. Uh, 
speaking of Balboa and just the marina situation, I know they've been making progress on that, but uh, I think when I was talking to somebody, I thought I understood they were trying to get it open by sometime in August. But uh, one of the other things that Charlie shared with us, I guess they've got pretty much a deadline, maybe by October or something, to get that. I think they've got deadline or permit. She told me the other day that they were shooting for Labor Day. Okay. Well, yeah, early September. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I was out there the other day and I talked to you, Adam, I think, is the guy that's working for him. Seemed to be pretty conscientious. Uh, he went out and our boat was tied up close enough where it was, you know, bouncing off the top. So I think uh, Dr. Shorten might have mentioned that. They went out and retied it. And then he and I were out walking around the other day and he just, you know, it was on a swivel. He stopped and retied a boat. It wasn't like that properly. And then turned the power off on the boat. People just gotten out and left, and the lights were still on. Yeah. So he seemed to be pretty conscientious about watching what's going on out there. Yeah. Okay. That's it for the agenda. Uh, anybody have anything else? I know we need to get some people out of here early today. So any, anything else? And this is the shortest select community meeting out here in the audience. I'm sorry, the audience is right back there. Uh, true. Well, I don't know that we really have an audience as much, but do we have any comments from the back of the room or questions? Or Yes. It was a really good meeting, and thank you for letting us record. Excellent. Thank you. Good catch, then. All right. Good job, Jerry. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Meeting is adjourned.